everyone. I'm Shreya and I'm going to share with you all uh, how I created this innovative design of lunar lander. We all know that uh, landing on moon is complicated and shock is a major cause of damage and failure for the cabin and electronic devices. The entire mission success is dependent on this last stage of landing. Hence, I'm going to create an innovative design of uh, lunar landing which will uh, manage all these external forces acting during the landing. Before we begin making the prototype, let me explain what are the materials required. So this experiment is going to be very easy and all the materials are readily available at home. First I have used this cup, paper cup, which will be our main cabin. And this plastic ball uh, represents the crew members which we have to protect during the landing. And we can observe what are the forces getting transferred to this ball. Then for the uh, structure I have used few ice cream sticks and straws. And for design enhancement I have used these uh, sponge. And this is another uh, to make parachute which is again for design enhancement I have used this thread and sheet. I will be making two prototypes. The first one is called the lunar lander with two pads. Now why am I calling uh, it with two pads? So let us have a look at this. If you look closely, these are inspired by camel legs. Uh, these are long enough so that the force is equally distributed among the large area. Let's move on to the second prototype. This is called the lunar lander with four circular legs. Uh, so that these four legs can reduce the contact force and the circular base will increase the contact area. Start making the prototype one. To begin with, take two ice cream sticks and insert a straw between them and secure it with cello tape. Similarly, create one more pad. Now take another ice cream stick and attach straws at the two ends of this stick and secure it with cello tape. Similarly, you have to create the same structure for the other side. Assemble this structure together and our prototype 1 is ready. Let's start making prototype 2. Take 4 paper cups. Now cut the paper cup in such a way that we can reduce the height of the paper cup. This will make the base for the lander. Now make a hole in the base of the cup and insert a straw inside the hole. Now assemble all these four legs together such a way that the angle between the straw and the ground is more. This makes our prototype 2 ready. Now let's start testing prototype 1. The test is very simple. But the observation here is very important. We have to check how the prototype is landing on the surface. Check whether the landing is smooth or is there any failure. Another important thing is the effect of landing on the ball. Check the vibration of the ball whether it is bouncing or not. Now let us compare the observation in both the tests. If you see the landing was firm in both prototype 1 and 2. But the prototype 1 landed with a big thud noise. Whereas prototype 2 grounded smoothly. The severity of impact was high in prototype 1 compared to prototype 2. And there was no failure of structure in both the prototypes. Now this one is very important effect on the crew or the ball. It is observed that the ball was bouncing out of the cabin in prototype 1 whereas the ball is firm inside the cabinet and the impact forces are well managed in the prototype 2. Now why has this happened that the ball has not bounced in prototype 2? This is because the well management of the forces. Now let us have a look at the force transfer in both the tests. In prototype 1, the impact forces are directly transferred to the cabin causing high acceleration levels to the crew 
and hence you can see the ball is bouncing. Whereas in prototype 2, the forces are divided by four legs and also the surface area is more at the base of the legs with circular contact area so the impact forces are well distributed. As legs are more inclined, the vertical force component transferred to the cabin is lower and hence acceleration observed by the ball is less and it is firm inside the cabin. So, if you want to design a good lander, there are certain things that you have to keep in mind. A good lander design should have four or higher number of legs with higher contact area at the base to distribute the impact forces. The legs should be designed as inclined links so that the vertical forces transferred to the cabin will be less. For the same mass of the cabin, crew and the inside devices, this effective force management will reduce the acceleration level to the crew and electronic devices. Similar design is observed in existing lander by space agencies and it can be proved experimentally by using available material by performing simple and funful experiment at home. Now I have done the design enhancement to manage the forces further well. The first one is a shock absorber system at base using sponges. Shock absorbing materials are useful for absorbing energy during impact. Opposite direction force using simple parachute. Opposite direction forces will reduce the impact as well as it will help in reducing landing velocity. Rockets are used for generating this force, but it is difficult to demonstrate that using simple materials. Opposite force is generated by using atmospheric air resistance and drag. This will further reduce impact velocity and force thus saving the cabin and crew. But keep in mind that on the moon surface, atmosphere is very thin, so parachute will not help. But it is used for explaining the concept of opposite forces to gravity. With this funful experiment, we can learn various science concepts such as impact forces and impact energy, dynamics of structures and force transport path, shock absorption system and materials, aerodynamics drag and lift. I hope you had fun making your own lander at home and uh, you must have understood how different space agencies like NASA and ISRO design their own landers.